Oh, hello there. Come and join me. My name's Nicole and I have a story I want to share with you. It's called Doug Lug, Boy Slug and is by Peter Bentley and illustrated by Bill Ledger. Do you always eat your vegetables? In this story, Doug hates vegetables. He won't take a bite, but then he turns into a slug in the night. Do you think Doug will start eating his vegetables? Let's take a look. Little Doug Lug loved chips and baked beans. He loved pizza and pies, but he hated his greens. Mum tried to tell Doug Lug he was wrong. Eat all your greens and you'll grow big and strong. You can't go and play till that plate is all finished. I'm off to the garden to water my spinach. There was only one thing that annoyed Mrs Lug, and that was the sight of a slimy fat slug. I just can't believe it, she said. What a pain. They're eating the plants in my garden again. A friendly old gardener was just passing by. He said, here's a powder for slugs you can try. It makes them feel funny. They hate it, I found, if you sprinkle a tiny bit over the ground. The best time to use it is six in the morning. It'll sort out your problem. But one little warning, this powerful powder, don't touch it yourself. Please keep it safe on a very high shelf. That night, little Doug wanted something to drink. So he crept to the kitchen and went to the sink. But he tripped in the dark on the edge of a rug and the powder tipped over and fell onto Doug. What a very strange powder. It tickles, Doug cried and it's making me feel a bit funny inside. He felt himself changing and then he cried eek as his skin started turning all slimy and sleek. It took 30 seconds for little Doug Lug to change from a boy to a massive great slug. I'm hungry, said Doug, slipping over the floor and using his slug tail to open the door. He slid down the path to the vegetable garden and said to the slugs there, I do beg your pardon. It's been quite a while since I last had my tea. So is there a nice juicy cabbage for me? But as soon as the other slugs saw that great beast, they turned round in terror and fled from their feast. They slithered away just as fast as they could to a nice slimy swamp far away in a wood. Doug said, I know, I'll find much more to eat if I go to the shop at the end of the street. He found the back door of the shop open wide. That's lucky, thought Doug as he slithered inside. He slipped past the cookies, the cakes and the sweets, the tarts and the ice creams and all kinds of treats. Then he came to the vegetables, pile after pile and started to gobble them all with a smile. Cabbages, spinach and broccoli too. Nothing was left by the time he was through. But then Doug heard a sound. I hear footsteps, he cried. They're coming this way. I need somewhere to hide. The footsteps were made by a robber named Jack who was just sneaking out with a sack on his back. The robber had almost crept out of the store when he saw a strange shadow quite close to the door. Yikes, 
thought Jack. I've got a weird feeling. The shadow was coming from up on the ceiling. A monster, yelled Jack, and he started to dash back through the shop with his big sack of cash. He smashed the front door and he hadn't run far when he saw the police driving up in their car. Hey, cried the officers, holding Jack tight. It's you who's been robbing the shops every night. Arrest me, said Jack. I don't really care, as long as I'm safe from that creature in there. A great monster slug thing. Look, there's its trail. At least I'll be safe if you put me in jail. Well, they followed the slime trail to see where it led. But only found Doug safely tucked up in bed. Look, said the sergeant. It's just little Doug. Jack was pretending. There's no monster slug. The police were all pleased that the robbing had ended. The next day, at lunch, Mrs Lug said, How splendid! That powder has vanished. It's really quite weird. But so have the slugs. They have all disappeared. But Doug Lug just smiled as he happily ate all the broccoli, spinach and sprouts on his plate. That's all for now. I hope you'll join me for another story soon.